Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explaining about some of the objective questions and answer for a metal casting processes. So this is a part number one that will be containing with a top 20 questions list. So that will be help for cracking a GAT mechanical, UPSC, GPSC and all kind of competitive examinations. So let us start with our question number one. Alloys of which of the following metal is not used for hot chamber die casting process. So option A, tin, option B, lead, option C, zinc and option D, iron. So basically in case of the hot chamber die casting process, among the following metals, the alloys which are made of iron are least manufactured by using hot chamber die casting process. So rest of the others like a tin, zinc and lead that will be manufactured with the help of hot chamber die casting process. So the right answer is option D, iron. The next question, in hot chamber die castings, before the end of the stroke, what uncovers the part? Option A, injector. Option B, plunger. Option C, burning flame. And option D, die cavity. So in these questions, in the process of the hot chamber die casting process, as soon as the stroke ends, there has to be some part which would be removed the cover over the part. So in case of the hot chamber die casting process, before the end of the stroke, it is the plunger that uncovers the part. So that is the main function. So the right answer is option B. The next, which of the following is not counted among the limitations of pressure die casting? So option A, only small parts can be produced. Option B, high cost. Option C, low scale production and option D, castings are porous. So in this, the pressure die casting is used for a mass production basically because there will be only feasibility with respect to the cost also. So the reason behind that, the equipment needed in pressure die casting is not available at low cost. So in our any kind of manufacturing process, we always preferring a low cost productions with the high performance of our product. So that will be a low cost. So the dyes are used in this process to are very expensive. So the basically right answer is low scale productions that will be not used. The next in pressure die castings production rate is low. Option A true, option B false. So in pressure die castings a very high production rate is possible as it becomes economical for a large quantities. So basically that will be only feasibilities with respect to a mass productions. So that will be the false. The next which of the following statement is true? Option A Casting is the replica of the object to be cast. Option B, pattern is the replica of the casting object. Option C, casting and the pattern are same things. And option D, molten material is casted into the cast cavity. So, pattern is the replica of the object. That is the right statement. So, except for the core prints and allowances, the patterns exactly resembles the casting. So, that will be basically definitions of the pattern that will be replica of our desired shape. Or you can say replica of the object. So, the right answer is option B. The next, which of the following carries the mold cavity where the metal is to be poured? Option A pattern, option B casting, option C sand and option D core. So for castings to be made, the pattern is filled with the molten material 
and then is allowed to solidify it. So using proper cooling rates before it's extract out. So basically right answer is option A, pattern. The next, which of the following is not an allowance given to the pattern for castings? So option A, shrinkage, option B, draft, option C, hole, and option D, machining. So in case of the types of allowances is being applicable, so here the option C that will be a hole is made during the machining or you can say finishing of the castings and it is a, not a type of the allowances. So all the shrinkage, draft, machinings that all are the category of types of allowances that will be generally given to the pattern materials. So here the right answer is option C, hole that will be not considering as a allowances. The next, the quality of the final product is not dependent on option A, method of withdrawal of the pattern, option B, allowance provided to the pattern, option C, the complexity of the castings and option D, the metal used into the castings. So basically metal used into the castings is a concern till its velocity affect the flow or occupations to the KVT. So this does not affect the final product physically once metal is being solidified. So basically the metal used into the castings. So the right answer is option D. The next the life of a pattern is most likely to depend upon which of the following term. Option A, number of castings produced. Option B, type of cooling rate of the casting. Option C, size of the casting. And option D, size of the pattern. So obviously the more casting produced means more exposure of the pattern to the elevated temperature of the molten metals and hence the slowly causing distortions to the sand grains as well as onto the pattern materials. So as from these questions the right answer is that will be depends upon the number of castings to be produced. The next, what is the function of cores in the casting process? Option A to support the pattern. Option B to provide differential cooling rates at specific portion. Option C, to make holes and cavities. And option D, for ease of the flow of the molten materials. So basically the cores are elements used to provide a hollow cavities and you can say for making a holes into the castings. So basically the function of course that will be to make holes and cavities into the sand casting process. So option C. Then a draft allowance is provided to option A all linear faces, option B only the interior dimensions, option C only the exterior dimensions and option D only the dimensions that are perpendicular to the parting plane. So basically the draft allowance is used for those dimensions which are perpendicular to the parting line to give out the tapered face which is machine letter. So the right answer is only the dimensions that are perpendicular to the parting lines. The next question, which of the following is not a part of the pattern at most times? So option A, mold KVD. Option B, cope. Option C, molten metal. And option D, core. So basically the molten material is poured into the mold KVD to make a castings. After the solidifications and hence it does not constitute the pattern. So that will be not a part of the pattern. So option C, molten materials or you can say molten metal. Then the function of gated pattern is option A to produce small castings in mass productions. 
ऑप्शन बी टू क्रिएट कास्टिंग्स ऑफ अ वेरी हैवी मास ऑप्शन सी टू क्रिएट कास्टिंग्स कंटेनिंग कॉम्प्लेक्स डिजाइन एंड ऑप्शन डी टू क्रिएट सिमेट्रिकल कास्टिंग्स सो बेसिकली गैटेड पैटर्न मैन्युफैक्चर द ह्यूज नंबर ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स यूजिंग अ सिंगल टाइम कास्टिंग्स यूजिंग अ कॉमन गैटिंग इनलेट सिस्टम्स सो द कास्टिंग नीड्स टू बी अ स्मॉल एंड सिंपल एंड इट इज ओनली जस्टिफाइड फॉर अ मास प्रोडक्शन so the right answer is to prepare small castings into a mass production so option a then which of the following factors affect the choice of the pattern at most of times option a size and complexity of the castings option b characteristics of castings option c type of molding and casting method to be cast type of cooling rates to be provided so the type of the cooling rates that will be depends upon the required strand into the castings so which cannot be controlled by the type of any patterns so proper chills to be used for that purpose so basically the type of cooling rates that will be one of the factor that will be affect the choice of the pattern most of time so option d then what is the function of riser in a sand castings so option a provide good mobility to the molten metal option b prevent cavities due to the shrinkage option c to develop holes or hollow cavities into the castings and option d to provide differential cooling rates into the specific areas of the castings so basically the risers also known as a feeders are used to decrease the phenomena of shrinkage during the solidification process on the molten metal so the right answer is to prevent cavities due to the shrinkage so that is the main advantages of the function of the risers then runners gates and risers are attached to the pattern too option a provide ease of cooling option b provide fit to the molten material option c provide design to the casting and option d enhance the finishing of the castings so basically these external elements are added to pattern or can say mold cavity to enhance the flow of the molten matter so basically the right answer is option b provide fit to the molten materials the next pattern cannot be constructed out of which of the following materials option a wood option b wax option c oil and option d metal so basically wood wax metal plaster of paris that all are the types of pattern materials that will be used to making a sand casting products but oil that will be not used as a pattern materials so oil is used as a fuels for melting the metals into the various furnaces it cannot be used for constructing a pattern while all other materials that will be used to making a patterns so the right answer is option c oil then which of the following is not a criteria for selecting pattern materials first method of molding option b establishment of parting line option c chances of repeat orders and option d complexity of castings so while selecting a pattern pattern establish a part line is counted under the function of the patterns and not under the criteria for selecting it whereas all other remainings are factors that will be used for choosing the right pattern materials so the right answer is option b and that will be the establishment of parting lines the next which among the following wood is most widely used for making a patterns a white pine b mahogany C tick and D maple 
So basically, white pine is used mostly white for uh, making a uh, patterns because white pine woods is soft and it is also observed that it is comparatively easy to work onto the wood. Also, this is comparatively cheaper than another wooden materials. So right answer is option A. The next steel is an alloy of which two elements? Option A, iron and brass. Option B, brass and aluminium. Option C, iron and carbon. And option D, carbon and aluminium. So basically, steel, it will be the alloying elements of carbon and iron. So you might be remember the iron carbon diagram that will be the category of steel or cast irons. So basically by mixing of carbon into the iron, so it will be formation of steel. So up to 2% carbon into the iron, so it becoming steel. So basically that will be the interstitial solid solution of carbon into iron. And that will be up to the 2% carbon in iron. So basically right answer is iron and carbon. So I hope you understand all questions. If you like this, then subscribe and share Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. Thank you so much and keep watching.